good afternoon and good evening. I will show you how to read the periodic table. Hajime uh, So you can see atomic number and atomic weight are used for nuclear fusion. I'm going to talk about naming compounds. So compounds, we have two types of compounds first. We have ionic and covalent. Uh, first is ionic. Ionic is the bond between two non between a metal and a non-metal. Between those two, there is a, a transfer of atoms happening, not a sharing, but a transfer of atoms from the metal to the non-metal. So we will also name the compound that will come after. Will come after. Okay. So how do you name it? For example, we have one example here. We will have. Na and Cl. So Na, uh, Na, which is sodium, and we have Cl. Okay. If you bond them together, you will have NaCl. First rule: you uh, the format of the name of the in naming an ionic compound, you would have to you have to follow this form formula. First, you will name. You will write the name of the metal, which is, in this case, we have sodium. Sodium, and then next, the root of the non-metal, which is, if chlorine, we will have chlor. Chlor, and then plus IDE. Plus IDE. So for NaCl, you will have sodium chloride. Another example would be MGS. MGS is magnesium and so forth. So first, get the name. Write the name of the metal, which is magnesium, and the name, the root word plus IDE of the non-metal, which is so or so forth and like so fine. Sodium chloride and magnesium so fine. Next is the covalent compounds. Covalent compounds. Uh, Covalent compounds needs two non-metals. It is the bond between two non-metals, and there is no transferring happening. There is no transferring that is happening between those bonds, but there is a sharing of electrons between a non-metal and another non-metal. To name one is to follow this formula here. So an example would be CO2, which is carbon dioxide. So to get that, you would have first name the first non-metal, which is carbon, plus the prefix, which is the number here. We have different prefixes for different numbers. In this case, we have two, so that is di. Di plus di, plus the root word of the not another non-metal, which is oxygen, which would be ox, oxy, ox, yes, plus ide which will make it carbon dioxide. Another would be H2O, which is water in Lehman's term. H2O. First, the non-metal, which is hydrogen. Hydrogen, but we have a number here, so you would have to write the prefix as well. So that would be, even if we call water hydrogen oxide, Hydrogen oxide, the real, the complete name of water is dihydrogen oxide. So, dihydrogen. Di, di, root word of oxygen, ox plus ID, so oxide. For covalent compounds, you have carbon dioxide and dihydrogen oxide. So back to our readings and so when see after octo after after atomic weight oxidation state uh, oxidation state is used for stabilizing compounds with the law of octaves. Hello, I am going to show you how to do electron configuration. 
Electron configuration is a distribution of electrons of an atom or molecule in atomic or molecular orbitals. So here we have an example of an element called silicon with the atomic number of 14 and we are going to configure it by using the SPDF method. SPDF is the acronym for spherical, principal diffused, and fundamental. I repeat, SPDF is the acronym for spherical, principal diffused, and fundamental, where S is equals to 2, P is equals to 6, D is equals to 10, F is equals to 14. Now, what we need to do is to do the configuration pattern, which is 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, and 3P6. But remember, we need to match the number of electron to the atomic number of silicon, which is 14. If you sum all of the electrons, it would give us 18, but we need 14, so what we are going to do is we are going to remove 4 to 3P6, so that it would count as the same as the atomic number of silicon, just like what it, it is written on the board. Now, let's head to the orbital diagram which are the pictorial descriptions of the electrons in an atom and to be filled with the up and down arrow symbol. Remember that the boxes are the same number of the electron orbitals. Now, there's a rule where the first to write is the up arrow and then after the Q will go down. Do it again on the other box. Now. There are multiple boxes together. Make sure that you first fill it up with up arrows first and then you go down. Now, repeat until the arrows count to 14 just like the configuration of the atomic number. Now we are ready to fill the final step to complete and is to find the quantum number. In order to find the n or the principal quantum, we are going to put the last energy level the silicon has. And then to find the azimuthal quantum, we are going to put the orbital shape's number which is number 3 according to the pyramid. Now let us head to magnetic quantum where we put the last arrow's position on the principal box which you are going to mark it in negative to positive. It will say that it will land on the zero box which is the center of the principal box between negative 1 and positive 1. After that, we're going to find the spin quantum where the last orientation of the arrow that stops at 14. Remember that positive half would be the up arrow and the negative one would be the down arrow. So now that we know, we are simply putting the positive half because the last arrow was pointing upwards. So, electronegativity is a measure of how strongly the atoms attract electrons on the bond. Under the electronegativity, we have polar, non-polar, and a unique bond. In finding the electronegativity, we must consider the following. Um, polar is 0 point, uh, less than 0 0.4. Non-polar is 0 0.4 to 1.7. And a unique bond is 1.7 and above. So here's some example on finding the electron negativity. Wait lang po. So we have hydrogen and oxygen. So subtract. So the answer is 1.4. So 1.4 is under of uh, non Nice. <laughs> Let's move on to nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is a reaction in which two or more atomic nuclei com uh, are combined to form one or more atomic, different atomic nuclei or subatomic particles. First, let's identify the nuclei uh, even to be balanced. That uh, where X is the symbol of the element, for example, helium, which gives us HE. 
where the superscript is uh, the atomic weight of the given element, which is 4 in stable form, and the subscript is the atomic number of the given element. For example, for example, we have a given of helium combined with nitrogen that emits barium. First identify the given uh, first identify the given elements to be balanced, which, is, which are helium, nitrogen, and barium. The reactants helium. Combined with nitrogen, we will give an atomic weight of seven, uh, 14 and 7 emitting beryllium. With an atomic weight of 9 and an atomic number of 4. To find the second product, Ay, so, uh, to balance the clear fusion, the superscript, and, the superscript and the subscript of the reactants must be equal to the superscript and the subscript of the proteins. 4 plus 4 minus 9. Uh, the sub, the super, the subscript two plus seven is equal to nine minus the subscript of the product four is equal to five. Now that we have our atomic number, let's uh, look for the element that has five products, which is four. Nine plus nine. Eight. Nine plus nine is equal to eight. Four. Now we have our balanced nuclear fusion.